Hi folks, welcome to today's EMBN show. We are back in Bristol where all the cool people live. Oh, and Jack, the cameraman behind the camera. And we are at the home of Starling Cycles. We're joined by Joe McEwen, and we're looking at the latest developments on his e-mountain bike. Now, folks, if you haven't seen the video on Joe's concept thermoplastic bike, check that out on the channel. Uh, but to pick up where we left off, we were about to go into the motor and also the jack shaft. Yeah. Joe, talk us through the jack shaft. Um, so jack shaft is really a way of transferring the power from down here up to a higher pivot, but then keep your same chain length here. So what you have is you can't see it, the chain ring's on the other side. I'm sure we'll get some shots of that. So as we pedal here, you drive the chain ring, which is on this side, which drives a cog. And then we've got a shaft through the middle that this cog turns this cog, and then this runs back to the, the rear wheel. Yeah. Now folks, I just want to give you a bit of background to Joe. Now Joe makes steel full suspension mountain bikes. I have to say, they're pretty close to my heart, some of the best ones in the world. But he takes his inspiration from the likes of Brooklyn Machine Works yeah, uh, of the New York. Yeah, shaft idea, yeah. And also of uh, Doc from Superco. Yeah. Beautiful bikes, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, lovely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the latest developments of this bike. Now, previously we saw that the battery was internal. As you can see, we've now got a nifty little Kevlar. Yeah. I mean, Joe likes his materials, doesn't he? Yeah. We've got thermoplastic, <laughs> we've got steel, we've got... Um, what were those bits there called? Yeah, the 3D printed 3D stainless printing. bits, yeah. And now we've got some Kevlar. Um, talk us through the, this is demountable now, isn't it? Yeah, so the battery very easily, you can drop this guard down, pop a little switch at the back, the back, battery drops out. So it just means you can either stick a battery in your van, go and do some runs, come back, swap a new battery in or stick, they're not very big, it's the size of the bottle, like 1.8 kilos, I think. Stick that in your pack. It's so. What's that? It's probably like. That's I think that's one point eight kilos. One point eight kilos. Yeah. So we've got four hundred watt hours there, folks. So, I think it's. I think it's definitely a way to go riding your e-mountain bike. It's like I said, go go for a ride in the morning, get back to the cafe, sausage and bacon roll or a coronation chickpea roll, yeah. whatever you're gonna have, uh, and then back on the trail. Uh, Joe, what I really like is the fact you've tuned in to. Yeah the rear hub, the yeah. internal geared hub. Now, uh, if you might have seen that myself and Ray have done an internal geared hub bike uh, with a mid-drive Tongshen motor on the channel, check that video out. But this is Kindene yeah. from Norway. Uh, me and Jack saw it at the Eurobike show last year. Very cool, Sub, yeah. I think it's sub one kilo for the hub on the back. Uh, I think the, the hub is like 1.2, I right. think. Can yeah. you talk through how it actually works and how's it been for you? you, you obviously, you're quite new to it. Um, it works like a hub gear. You press, <laughs> you press a button, it changes gear. Um, but you can't just press the button, No, there is, there is a little bit, you have to drop off the power a little bit, but apparently that will improve as the gearbox wears in. So I think that's the thing that'll improve. But yeah. the, the gear shifts are positive, the range is good. Keep a nice single speed chain, there's no derailleur flapping around. Um, it's been good. And the, the weight is similar to a, a hub plus a cassette plus a. Yeah. Plus so, a so we're probably we're looking at, if we normally got um, a cassette around about 350 grams. Yeah, big ones, 400, 450. Yeah, yeah. And like increasingly, if, you, if, you, if we're getting cassettes which are built for e mounted by yeah. purpose, the increased torque, More steel in we're probably going to be looking at around about 500 yeah, yeah, grams, yeah. right? Yeah. Add to that the derailleur at 300 grams, yeah, well, and, yeah. but maybe the shift doesn't come into it, and the hub, obviously. And yes, yeah, not, not far no. off, is it? But what are your feelings, Joe, when you've been riding this bike out on the trail? It's, it's good, so the hub gears are good. The, the dropping off the power is a little bit tricky as you're climbing, if you need to change gear as you're climbing. But other than that, it's been brilliant. No issues, it's silent, there's no flappy chain. I like that idea. Um, and yeah, silence is, is key, isn't it, to, to yeah. going fast. If you do know about the geometry of the bike, uh, 170 mil travel, front and rear, 29, 27.5, I think. Yeah. Uh, 63 head angle. Yep, something like that, yeah. 445 chain yeah, I think stay. So, yeah. And obviously one of the great things that makes Starling bikes great is that you can actually get the bike to fit your shape and size. So if you need a bike of 520 reach, yep. Joe can do that. If you wanted a four or 315 reach, like maybe Jack would need, then, you know, it's all good. Uh, <laughs> 
But, you know, apart from you know, reach and size and all that, where's the bike going, Joe? What's the latest development? Where are you taking this so bike? So there's, there's more design changes to make. This, this whole area can be neater. We're working with someone to make a more refined guard. Um, but the, the top part of it is all good. It rides beautifully. The way the bike rides is amazing. There's a little bit of further work on the software with the motor to get that working properly. So it's close, but no, I'm, I'm not in any massive rush. I want to get it right before we start selling them. Um, but it's, yeah. it's close, it's close. And I think, for me at least, I think the feeling that steel gives you out on the trail, mm. you know, I think you get less fatigue in your body. Yeah. Obviously, it's to do with, you know, the wheel build and the suspension yeah. and all that. But some of the time, whether it be carbon fiber or aluminium, the frames can be a little bit stiff and steel yeah. does give you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it gives you, that allows you to have, you know, comfort, it allows you to have grip. You don't, get that, material, you don't get that rattle that you get with alley bikes. You don't get that noise and that sort yeah. of feeling of tauntness. It's got a bit of spring, a bit of gear, but it feels nice. Yeah. So. yeah. So, folks, if you've never ridden a steel full suspension bike, uh, please do so. If you've never been to Bristol, please do so. Like I said, there's where all the cool people live <laughs> and Jack. Uh, fantastic road called Gloucester Road, where there's some fantastic yeah. food shops. Yeah, it's lovely. Uh, which is where we're going now, Joe. Uh, okay. Uh, great to catch up with you. Yeah, like I said, so don't forget to check out the thermoplastic concept bike on the channel. Uh, yeah, can't wait to see you on the trails and get to yeah, ride yeah, both yeah. these bikes. Yeah, you too. Yes, uh, some great developments there from Joe McEwen down at Starling Bikes in uh, well, Bristol. That's where all the cool people live, right? Close, Froome. Froome! Yeah, that's the best place to live. All right. Uh, yeah, Chris, I'm talking about materials. Mm -hmm. Have you ever ridden, did you ever ride steel hardtails? I was going to say, oh, I oh, thought you were oh, going to talk about oh. thermoplastic bikes there because I did ride an old GT Lobo, which is, I think that was All thermoplastic right. back did, in the day. Did have some comments. So mm. basically, um, a few weeks ago, we actually had Joe's thermoplastic bike uh, on this channel. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the, the, the GT was, wasn't yeah, it? Well, it was the back old, in the day, yeah. It was the SDS, LTS. SDS, SDS. CH and the Lobo. Steve, Steve Peters mm. riding, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, so yeah, good stuff. Interesting to see that all coming back. I think with the you know with the e-bike stuff and that from Joe, his input into it. Yeah, do you know what? I'd mm. love, I'd love to see uh, more steel bikes yeah. uh, on the market. Obviously, I did hear Curtis were thinking about making really? one, so that could be quite interesting. Yeah. So, right, I guess the, diff the difficulty is, I mean, the difficulty is is the um, is the battery placement, mm -hmm. but. You know, as we're seeing in the minute, uh, a lot of batteries, we're getting down to batteries, which are up to a thousand watt hours. Mm -hmm. So you, you, know, you can easily envisage like, you know, a 500 or a 600 fitting into a steel down tube. Definitely. And as Joe said mm -hmm. himself, you know, batteries and steel frames in the future are simply not going to be an issue. No. So I think we'll definitely see some developing. Exciting some times problems. ahead for sure. Talk, as in TikTok from Italy have got uh, two new bikes in their range. The mm -hmm. first one is a 140-150 bike, um, kind of more, I wouldn't say entry level at 5,000 euros, but it's uh, definitely a bit different to the bike we're going to talk about after this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, small, medium, large, extra large. Shimano EP8 motor, 630 watt hour battery. Now, battery? So look at the placement on this thing, it's a bit odd, isn't it? It's not odd, Chris. It's a battery. It's a 630 watt hour battery in the down tube. I know, but the placement of this, we don't see too many batteries mounted underneath the down tube, do we? Well, I think that's just how that shot looks from that angle. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you know, Tok have been, uh, I've had these, this, this style for quite a while. And obviously I think it, like, like we talked about, you know, on last week's show, it brings that weight down towards the bottom bracket there. So. Yeah. Possibly, you know, we, we looked at the likes of, you know, Nico Vulio's developed the Lapierre bike with a centrally mounted yeah. battery. So, yeah, be interested to ride it, that's for sure. But Definitely. a bike which I really want to ride mm -hmm. is this next one. It is looking this good, isn't it? This is the Ducati uh, Toc Corse um, downhill bike. That's stunning, isn't it? It is looking good, isn't uh, it? Olin's front and back, um, 170, 180, 29, 27.5 mm -hmm. wheels on there. EP8 motor, 630 battery. This this time, an internal battery, Chris. I like that. Loaded with pin parts on the XT, DI2 gearing, crank brother synthesis, downhill wheels, rental cockpit, Magura, big 220mm synthesis. road. Synthesis? Yeah. What's the synthesis? The carbon wheels, the crank Synthesis. Synthesis, yeah. Um, 
Do you know what? Funny thing is, we talk, you, I want to go back to this battery thing mm-hmm. because one of the, my favourite ever e-mountain bikes was actually the uh, the Canyon Spectral, the first one with the with the top Excellent mounted battery. Mount, yeah. What an amazing bike! It is, isn't it? Yeah. Easy to take the battery mm-hmm. out. Um, Carry one in your backpack. There's little 500 watt hour batteries. Yeah. Think super simple to put in. Easy. Key. That's you know, the only bad thing on there. It's a key release. We're getting carried away. We maybe we're getting carried away with how bikes look. We don't look at your bike when you ride it. No, but, but some... then again. You do look at your bike and sneak once in the garage. Exactly. Yeah. It's got to be looking good. And I do think that that, that uh, Ducati bike does look good. It does. Really Comes good. in 10,980 euros for that big travel bike. So not cheap, but a great looking bike, pimped out with a load of top level kit. Yeah. Turning our attention now to some clothing. Now, I did get pulled up a few weeks ago that uh, I had a bit of a fetish for shoes and pedals. But mm-hmm. uh, rubber, wasn't it? What was that? Rubber. Rubber. Mm-hmm. Anyhow. This is from I didn't know I did not know the Enduro was Scottish. Mm-hmm. Now Chris is a former athlete. Well, get this right, former Enduro athlete. He used to get pocket money off them in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, doesn't do it at the moment. Just want to make that clear. But these are some new shoes. Yeah. Really like them. They're looking good, aren't they? Three different models here. So you've got one clipless, you've got a technical flat pedal shoe, and more uh, a casual looking flat shoe as well. Uh, clip shoes, you've got the burner. Now, this is absolutely loaded with tech. Clever insole is super comfy on there. Loaded with tech? Yeah, so you've got a, a materials on the outside that don't absorb water. So it's not claiming to be waterproof, but just make those wetter rides a lot more comfortable. Um, got a protected toe box on there, and the cleat where you mount the you cleat. Know. Big, long. I think they're great shoes, but mm-hmm. you know what? If it's wet, you're gonna get wet feet. <laughs> you're gonna get wet feet. Yeah, you don't There's think you no do. shoe in the world that is waterproof. Louis looking at his shoes at the minute, like he's thinking, "Are my shoes waterproof?" He's thinking, "Yeah." <laughs> uh. <laughs> but flats are more your thing. Then you have two options. You've got the Burner flat pedal shoe, which is a nice casual looking shoe, and the Humvee, which is more of a skate style shoe. Good pricing on these, eighty nine ninety nine for those flat pedal shoes. A super tacky uh, sole, one hundred and nineteen ninety nine for the Burner flat pedal shoe. And the clipless pedal, that's coming at 129.99. So nice some shoes. good value shoes, nice shoes. There, I think, yeah. Uh, and yeah, if you haven't seen our flat pedal versus uh, SPD video, mm-hmm. it's on the channel, check that out. A uh, bit of a discussion between what Blake thinks and what Dolly thinks. Mm-hmm. And lastly, E13 have just released their plasma valves. Now this is a new tubeless kind of tech going on for the wheel. So it's a bit of a faff, isn't it? Topping up your tubeless sealant, Steve. You've never done it. You've never done it. I've never done it. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, true, true story. Never. <laughs> but you got a couple of choices here when you come to top up. So your... I let Chris talk about this. <laughs> a couple of choices here when it comes to topping up your sealant. It's either to uh, crack the bead <laughs> off the tire and fill it up with sealant, or you can inject it through the valve core, which means taking it uh, the valve core out of your pressure valve. But these basically remove all of that, so you can remove the top of the valve. Just put your sealant bottle in there, squeeze it in. Put the valve back in, job done. Super Ooh, good. Yeah. Pretty cheap as well, $25, loads of colour. So. Who'd have thought, eh? Nice. Mm. <laughs> Valves. Have you guys had a look at the shop? Yeah. Should do. Some mm-hmm. good stuff there. Absolutely loaded sweatshirts, got t shirts, beanie hats, loads of stuff to make you look as good as Steve well, Jones. Well, the reason I'm wearing a beanie hat, because last week Chris was taking the mick out of my hairstyle. Well, I had a bit of an odd style going on. I mean, you had the forehead exposed, spiky on one side, yeah. comb over on the other. Well, that's because the cat woke me up in the morning. <laughs> but yeah. if you want to be looking good on the trails or even out on the streets, get into the EMBN merch shop and check out all the latest gear. Don't forget. Uh, folks, I'm really happy to see that uh, you guys got involved in some of the comments on Joe McEwen's Starling uh, bikes uh, recently. Um, this one, Pat Hoffman, this is fascinating, Steve. Thanks for covering it, no worries. And then DKL uh, Vehiculos Electronicos, DKL. Nice R&D, very good. Looks like promising material and very nice bike too. Mm-hmm. And then there was this one. Then there was this one from Jack Scott. Joe. Carbon fibre for bikes go through nowhere near the stress that an airplane goes through. Now, I suggest you go and have a look at Joe McEwen's answer to that comment by Jack Scott because yeah. um, Joe knows his <laughs> He knows <laughs> knows his materials really well. So, you know, he wouldn't be taking things like this lightly. So, um, yeah, but folks, great comments from you guys. Uh, Kim Cummins, great to see your involvement. Right, time for Tech of the Week, and we've got a great entry in this week, a bit of home build action going on. We've got Robert, he's got an OS Blackbook 29er home build kit here. He's out in Cape Mears, Oregon. 
What do you think to this bike, Steve? I really like it. I really mm. like the fact that people are getting involved in making their home build kits. I love the seat stay uh, on the bike. Which nice is, angles, isn't which it? Which is amazing. Mm. But more than anything, I love the location. This is in Oregon. This is in Cape uh, Mires or Mears. Mm -hmm. Look at it. That's 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 a backdrop. Classic. It's good, isn't it? Almost Beautiful. matches the bike, doesn't it? And mounted. Yeah. I like it. Rigid. Looks good. super simple. I bet that's a nice breeze to ride that bike. Yeah, Robert. Thanks so much for sending mm. this picture. And it's a real inspiration to see people, you know, getting their old bikes in the sheds up and running with a new uh, mid-drive motor. New Fantastic. lease of life. Great Love stuff. It. Love it. Love it. We open this week's. Uh, where in the world? From Plonza Land. Plonza Land, otherwise in uh, Genk in Belgium with Sergey on his Mondrake. Nice bit of off, yeah. off camber action Plonza there. Plonza Land. Please let me know what Plonza Land is. And then uh, we might move to Pattaya, Thailand. And we have yeah. ever had a Thailand picture in the I think it's got to be one of the first, I think. Look at that. Uh, John. John, can we come to Thailand, please? <laughs> please. And finally, from the beautiful Dartmoor in the southwest of England, we've got Dave and the Canyon Neuron on uh, up at Burrito, Burrito Reservoir. What a great part of the world, Chris. Yeah, it's some part, miles around there. What a lovely part of the world to go to in springtime in the UK. Uh, folks, love your inspirational shots as ever. Uh, don't forget to chuck them in to the uploader and we can chat about them next week. Yeah. Yeah. We have got some beautiful bikes in the bike vault this week, and things kick off at Cobblers Plain, sorry, Cobblers Creek, uh, South Australia. And this is Neil Specialized S Works. That's a super nice shot, Chris. Isn't it? Gotta be a super nice. Gotta Check be. this one out. We've got Ricky here, he's got a Marin E2 out in Anton Valley. First ride on his e bike, absolutely loving it. What do you think of that backdrop, Steve? It's gotta be super nice. That's right? the kind of wear in the world shot, really, mm. isn't it? But still a great shot. Super nice for me. Super nice. Oh, and a trip, a lot of triplets. We've got mm. triplets. Rottweiled. We've actually got a former Rottweiled rider sat there, but we can't because he's on the Dirt Shed show. Nigel Page is on the Dirt Shed show next week. Um, but he's, right, he's literally right there. Smelling. Oh, yeah, quick, quick shot. There he is. There he is. <laughs> Ma Martin hijacked him. We couldn't have him. Anyway, back to her bike vault. Yeah. Uh, Got Propane uh, Ecano as well. Up from Calpe in Spain, out on the beach. Calpe. Calpe. Looks good. Super, super nice. nice. Super nice. And then this is Will's Focus Sam Squared 6.9 Canic Chase. That's a nice shot. And then out in Cape Elizabeth in Maine, a Trek Real 9.7. Almost super nice, Chris, I think. Exactly. Almost. Got almost to be. So nice. Um, but this is from Catherine, 2020 Scott Genius from Sed in Sedgefield, South Africa. Wow. Sedgefield. Sedgefield sounds like UK. Sedgefield. But that is definitely a super nice shot. I'll check this out from Josh. Got a specialised turbo Levo out in Soap Lake in Washington. Nice backdrop, nice looking bike. Like, like that colour coordination going on there. Got to be a super nice for me. Yeah. And that's it from this week's Bike Vault. Uh, Lovely shots. Uh, folks, don't forget to get involved in the chat about steel e-mountain bikes mm. or thermoplastic. Uh, as Chris pointed out, actually, Nigel Page will remember the thermoplastic GTS as well, won't he? Will it's actually, actually, STS. Is it STS? And the Lobo, STS, DH. LTS. LTS, there you go. You can remember yeah. that. But get involved, get in that merch shop as well, check out all the latest kit, and we shall see you next week. And whatever you do, don't forget to tune in to the Dirt Shed show to talk, uh, where Martin Ashton talks to Nigel Page. Nigel Page is all about e-bikes. Just telling you from here.